Morning everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, I'm just letting everybody join. We've, uh, we're actually over-prescribed over today. So prescribed, subscribed. Get the right word in. Uh, so morning, morning as everybody's joining. Just going to give it a minute while everybody comes on line. Guys, if you do want to take notes, you're more than welcome. This is recorded and as per usual, I will share the link afterwards because the, today is uh, morning. Today uh, we are obviously doing PRP, IPRF. So there's a little bit of science involved, but by all means, you know, feel free to make notes and we do encourage questions at the end. I, I want people to, um, morning Tracy, I want people to ask as many questions because I um, just want you to use this opportunity to learn as much as possible. There's no such thing as a stupid question, as we always say. So, good morning, Melissa. I'm going to give it a, just a, let's just say, another 30 seconds. Just give everybody a chance to come online. Grab yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Something stronger, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> We're at home. We're going anywhere. <laughs> well, most of us, anyway. Right, guys. Okay, so... We will make a start. I'll introduce myself. Uh, as you probably know by now, my name is Liz Cowan. I am one of the trainers for Cosmo Pro, and today we have a guest. So we are joined uh, with uh, Anita Woolley. So Anita is also one of our trainers, and Anita's background is biomedical science. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to bring Anita in today's webinar because, again, obviously I can answer questions, but if we want to just take it a little bit further, and Anita's knowledge is far superior to mine when it comes to obviously the biomedical science side of things. So you've got two for the price of one this morning. Good morning. What we're going to do is we're going to cover uh, PRP and IPRF. Now, this is an informative webinar. We're going to cover a little bit of background on, on blood, on platelets, on growth factors, and then I'm going to go through the differences between the two treatments as well. Now, I just want to make this clear, we're, we're, not, we're not going to bad mouth PRP, it's, and as you probably know, we are a manufacturer and we are a training provider, and we do favour IPRF. And I'm hoping by the, the end of today's webinar, uh, so will you, and uh, you'll understand why as well. So everything that I'm going to cover today is um, backed by data, science, and clinical evidence. This is not our opinion, this is all factual. And you can go on our website, you can even just go into Google if you want and just Google everything that we say because there's, there's, there's so many studies out there now that actually just reiterate what we're going through today. But at the end of the webinar, like I say, please, even if, you, if, you, if you've got a question, just pop it in the chat box and we'll go through them all at the end. So first things first, as per usual, let me just share my screen with you guys so you can actually see the presentation. As you, there we go. Okay. Where's my little cursor gone? Right, there we go. Okay, welcome. Right, PRP IPRF webinar. This is what we're going to cover today. The difference between PRP and IPRF, blood cells, vampire facial, because I know this is a, a favourite amongst a lot of you, leukocytes, platelets, activated versus non-activated platelets, growth factors, fibrin, centrifugation, PPP, PRP and IPRF, that's not easy to say, data and vacutainers, and then we're going to open this up for questions at the end. Right. Let's just look at a few differences to start with. Now, I can say there is a place for PRP and we actually do plasma fillers. So I'm going to go through that as well. But let's just have a look at a few differences. So IPRF does not use an anticoagulant. It's 100% natural. There are no chemical additives. There's no gel separator. So even though you've got PRP, you've got an anticoagulant and often a gel separator, this is a key difference. IPRF harvests over double the number of platelets when you compare it to PRP. And I'm going to cover why that's quite important later on. 
IPRF utilizes activated platelets. Now, if you don't know the difference between non-activated and activated platelets, I'm also going to cover that because that is very, very important. IPRF utilizes the fibrin mesh within the plasma. I am going to explain what fibrin and fibrinogen is. And IPRF allows the slow release of growth factors and it also contains antibacterial properties. Now these are the main differences between the two. They're both classed as autologous, but this is a numbers game and basically what we actually want is, is platelets. Let's do a little bit of revision. So blood is a transport system. It contains red blood cells, which carry oxygen, white blood cells, which help ward off infection. Obviously these cells have a few more roles, but I'm just, you know, a general overview. And platelets, platelets are also known as thrombocytes and they contain alpha granules and growth factors. However, for what we do, we're interested in the white blood cells, so the leukocytes, and we're interested in the platelets. We're not actually interested in the red blood cells. So I'm very quickly going to cover <laughs> the vampire facial. And I know this is easy to market. I completely get that, but it is one of my pet hates. And the reason being is I just find it really misleading for the client. So <laughs> the image on the right is an extreme. I would hate to walk out of the clinic looking like that, but just so you guys know, and I think just to quash any misunderstandings or misrepresentations, red blood cells do not contain any regenerative properties when we injected or smeared over your client's face. The vampire facial, and I get why it was nicknamed that, because like you say, Kim Kardashian made this famous, well, her, her practitioner did, but by just covering the client's face in red blood cells, one, it's a, it's a nightmare to get off because red blood cells literally just dries on the, you know, when you hurt yourself, it's a real nightmare to get blood off the skin, but it's actually quite unhygienic as well. But just so you know, this does not have any regenerative properties whatsoever by actually smearing red blood all over the face. You're completely wasting your time with this. So I just want to literally tick this off. What we actually want is platelets and leukocytes. Now, with PRP, what you tend to find is you lose most of your white cells because you spin your sample hard and normally for quite a long time. But you might be interested to know that leukocytes have a strong influence on wound healing and especially if you're combining this with something like microneedling even just simple meso injections you're still causing trauma you're relying on the body's own wound healing response to regenerate the tissue so leukocytes are really really important now mature neutrophils which is a type of white cell have more than 700 proteins including growth factors and pro-angiogenic factors and with IPRF, you preserve nearly 5% of your leukocytes, but with PRP, you end up with less than 1%. In some cases, not like 0.01% of certain type of leukocytes. So this is another key difference between the two treatments. But what we're really, really interested in is platelets. So what are platelets and i'm sure some of you already know this this is probably revision some of you this might be completely brand new so platelets are the smallest of the cellular elements in blood they're tiny tiny powerhouses and they possess exceptional regenerative properties platelets actually are from what you call a megakaryocyte they're fragments and they can produce the megakaryocytes can produce anything between 1000 to 3000 platelets platelets circulate in the bloodstream and they live for about nine to ten days and then they die and they become old and damaged basically they will be removed from circulation and this is why, I mean, somebody once told me that they thought platelets lived forever. Not true. They don't live very long at all, but they're very, very fragile and you need to look after them. So often, you know, if you're spinning really hard and for a longer time, 
you tend to lose them. So like I say, treat your sample with respect. And if you do have a centrifuge that bounces around, this will damage and rupture your platelets. Basically, they're ineffective by then. So just be mindful. This is why you need to use the right equipment as well. So please be mindful of that. But they're, they're, they're amazing cells. There's no substitute for a platelet. You, you, you can't replicate it in a lab. They, they are absolutely amazing cells, but they're so complex. So what I want to cover is activated and non-activated platelets. Now, this is key. You can see on the image that a non-activated platelet is, a, is, a, is funnily enough, it's plate shaped and that's where it gets its name from and it circulates. And if it, there's no trauma, there's no injury, or we obviously don't take it out of the body, it will remain plate shaped and it will die. But activated platelets, this happens when you hurt yourself, when you cut yourself, when we obviously use it for IPRF, when you, call, when you do microneedling and you cause bleeding, that will trigger the, the platelet to activate. And what happens is they change shape. So they go from a plate shape to this, uh, it grows arms basically. So like finger-like projections extend from the cell body. And on, upon activation, it releases the growth factors and the alpha granules and it also releases a series of antibacterial proteins because if you think about it, if you do injure yourself we need to fight infection as well so like i say this is very important because without the growth factor release we're not going to get tissue regeneration what also happens when platelets are activated because they grow their dendrites, they grow, like I was to say, arms, if you like, this helps them recruit more platelets. So they become sticky and once activated, they attract, they release uh, signals to recruit more platelets. So it's a win-win. Now, you may not know this, or you may know this, the anticoagulant that you use in PRP inhibits activation so the anticoagulant in your prp tube as you draw the blood out of the arm it makes it, it prevents the platelets from activation so there is no growth factor release whereas with iprf there is no anticoagulant so as soon as you draw blood it's obviously drawn into your medical device vacutainer your platelets activate straight away okay so bear that in mind remember this and this is what they release, growth factors. Growth factors are key. So your platelets release over 500 biomolecules, but they release seven fundamental growth factors. Now a growth factor is a naturally occurring substance capable of stimulating cellular growth, proliferation, healing, and cellular differentiation. Remember the platelet must be activated Otherwise, it does not release the growth factors and basically your platelet is ineffective. Now, you can see from this image here, the key growth factors are um, your PDGFs, your platelet derived growth factor, your vascular endothelial growth factor, your epithelial growth factor, your keratinocyte growth factor, insulin growth factors, transforming growth factor beta and your fibroblast growth factor. And these are working synergy as well. It's not just about one or the other. All of them have a role in tissue regeneration, particularly as well for hair growth. We, we do specialize in this and especially the fibroblast growth factor and the transforming growth factor. These have actually been clinically and scientifically proven that these play a major role in preventing uh, hair loss. Right, we're gonna move on to fibrin. Now, this is probably new to a lot of you and it's, and it's really important to understand what fibrin is. Now, you have what you call um, fibrinogen circulating in your blood. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because this is actually quite complex, but what happens is it's then cleaved by what's something called thrombin and it's, and it's converted to fibrin. And we actually utilize this in IPRF. So fibrin, is a unique biomaterial and it acts as a scaffold for tissue engineering. 
you only find fibrin in IPRF. It's not present in PRP. And not only does the fibrin act as a temporary extracellular matrix, it also traps the platelets and it allows the slow release of the growth factors, which means there's a more effective biomaterial for tissue regeneration. But what happens when you inject your PRP is there's no fiber in there to trap your platelets. So what you, what you, what you find is you actually lose a lot of your cells. So there will be some, you will retain a few, but nothing compared to the IPRF side of things. Now, another benefit of fibrin is it, it binds to hyaluronic acid. So you've obviously got HA in the skin naturally, and it will actually bind to this. So it's a, it's a fantastic byproduct. It basically helps um, plump, it helps volumize, it acts as a net to trap your platelets, and then they basically release the, the growth factor slowly. Studies show over seven to 10 days, possibly up to 14 days. And that's important because what you're actually doing is you're anchoring the platelets in place where you want them. The fibrin helps do that. And rather than you injecting your platelets and they're, they're washed away basically. So this is also a very uh, big difference between the two treatments. And it's natural. Your body then just breaks it down uh, via fibrinolysis and gets rid of it. So it doesn't stay there forever. Okay, now I am going to teach you to suck eggs. And I know everybody here, if you do PRP or IPRF, you need a centrifuge. And the centrifuge is simply a machine that separates cells. <laughs> so don't get me wrong, it's important that you have the right centrifuge, but what happens here is, with PRP, you put your sample in, you spin, and you normally spin probably about 3,000, 3,500 RPM, maybe between five and 10 minutes, depending on what protocol you're using, which is fine, that's, you know, that's not a problem. But with IPRF, what you actually do is we utilize the low, low speed centrifugation. So what we're actually trying to do is, going back to our platelets, they're tiny, tiny, tiny cells. And what happens is when you spin, if you spin too hard and you, you basically spin too fast, your tiny, tiny platelets will end up at the bottom of the tube and you can't harvest them. Now, this is important because what we're actually trying to do is preserve the platelets. Now, some platelets will survive and they will remain above your gel separator, but the majority, unfortunately, you will spin out. And this is another key difference between the two treatments. So with IPRF, you get over 85% increase from your baseline. I'm going to explain what a baseline is on the next slide. But with PRP, you end up with minus 16% at best. And that actually goes down to minus 57% at worst with your different PRP protocols as said. I know what everybody's using but you're, you're basically losing most of your cells, your platelets. And this is really important because they're the ones, they're the cells that possess the regenerative properties. Now I'm going to just pass over to Anita to describe this slide because this is actual data that highlights what I've just covered. Um, we're just gonna talk through what a baseline is and then obviously the data that shows on this graph, just, just so you have a very good understanding of what I've just gone through. Morning everybody. Um, quickly going to talk you through this. Um, I go to meetings and people put graphs up and by the time you've worked out what's actually happening on the graph, you've moved on again. So we won't make it too complicated. There's three sets of figures. So your first set of figures are your platelets, your second set of figures are your white counts and your third set of figures are your red blood cells. And within each of those sets of figures are the comparative numbers for a baseline, a PRP and an IPRF. And if we look at the first set of figures the, on each one, the first one, the orange column, are your baseline. And when I say baseline, if you went into a hospital and had a full blood count done, you would end up with a, a number for your platelet count your white cell count on your red cell count. And that's what your orange set are. 
So in your first column, your orange number is what your normal platelet count is. Your yellow column are what you end up with in a PRP tube after centrifugation. And if you look, you can see that in your platelet count, your numbers have actually gone down. You're still retaining some of your platelets. You haven't got rid of all of them. But as Lizzie says, this is a numbers game. What you're trying to do is you're trying to retain as many of your platelets as you can. So you wanted really to try and concentrate your platelets, not lose some. And if you look at the green column, that's exactly what we've done. We've ended up with more platelets. We haven't made the platelets. What we've done is we've concentrated them. These numbers are not definitive numbers. They're numbers, these are thousands per mil. And I know the numbers are tiny, so, but it's, it's the essence we're looking at. So the green column is your IPRF. And if you look, we've actually concentrated the platelets. We finished it with more platelets per mil than when we started in the green column, which was your baseline. If we look at the white cells and the red cells, we are still losing a lot of the white cells, but we are maintaining slightly more white cells in the IPRF column. Remember, these are numbers per thousand per mil, sorry, million per mil. And in the red cell column, if you look, we've, we've lost nearly all the red cells. Again, we don't want the red cells. And I know there's a little bit of um, controversy out there sometimes about um, we keeping a lot of red cells in the IPRF. But if you look, the numbers are really small. 0 0.02 in the PRP, 0 0.06 in the IPRF, they're virtually the same number. So yes, slightly more in the IPRF, but minuscule numbers. Again, to go back, it's the columns on the right that's really important, and we are concentrating. That's the important word, concentrating the platelets. Okay, I have a few images for you. A uh, picture speaks a thousand words, as they say. So I just want to go through the difference between PPP, which is platelet pore plasma, PRP and the IPRF harvest. Now, we do plasma filler and we use PPP and PRP in that, but in a different way. Um, we're not bothered about platelets in that, we're bothered about volumization and we actually basically heat it to make a gel. Now, PPP, as you can see, so I thought this was a really interesting slide to show you guys because you can clearly see every single digit and line on the syringe. That means you've got plasma, but you have got very, 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 very few platelets. It's clear. The PRP is slightly more cloudy, but you can still see quite clearly the lines on the syringe. I would just say the lines on the syringe, they're at the back of the syringe and not on the front of the syringe. We are looking through the plasma and the lines are turned away from the camera so what you're doing is you're looking through and you can see the numbers on the back of the syringe okay the next one the iprf you've got a few red blood cells in there which makes it that pinky color but you cannot see any markings on the syringe what this means is if you can see through your syringe if you can see the markings on the other side of your syringe you've got very few platelets. It's the platelets that basically make your harvest cloudy, for want of a better word. If you cannot see through your harvest, through your syringe, that means you have got a higher number of platelets. So if you, and I've seen this so many times where people say, you know, they, they, they harvest, they, they hold up the syringe and it's nice and clear plasma. Well, that's, that's poor. That's not what you want. The, the clearer the plasma, the fewer the platelets. So when you're next doing your treatments, and if you can see very clearly through your plasma, yes, you've got loads of plasma, but plasma is just a, just a carrier. There's, there's, you don't, the plasma there is just a transport system. It's the platelets that you actually want, and you do not want it clear. So I hope that kind of makes things, for want of a better word, a little bit clearer on what you actually want for this treatment, what you actually need. So bear this in mind. 
I would just jump in and just remind us all something that we all really know that we are all unique we are all different and everybody's blood is different so you might get a little bit more opaque in one tube than in another but it should be opaque you shouldn't be able to see through it but just remember everybody's harvest is slightly different there is when we're talking about the numbers of platelets in blood there is a range and what is normal for one person might not be normal for another so people's platelet concentration does vary a little bit so just remember that as well don't panic if you think oh it was more opaque last time mm. and a diet plays a, a role doesn't yes. it and hydration yes, obviously yes you guys probably know when you're trying to draw blood if they're dehydrated oh, it's a nightmare so um yeah as i say um i'm not i'm not going to cover that now but um yeah i just thought i'd mention it and and finally I just I just want to put this slide in and this is just more for advice uh, we know we're not pointing the finger at anybody but we've found over the years I mean we we launched IPRF in 2018 we've pioneered IPRF we are and I, and I say this in all we are the experts in IPRF but we found with some training schools unfortunately they've been uh, misinforming their students please do not use IVD tubes for your treatment whatever your whatever treatment you're doing the IVD tubes are not licensed and not by compatible for reinjection so if you're buying your tubes from Medisave please stop your insurance will be void and this is why IVD basically are for in vitro diagnostics they're for lab use they are not licensed for reinjection so autologous treatments you must use a medical device tube and basically this explains why um, so i'm not going to dwell on this um, but if you know any of these little images you can see in the corner of the slide you should not be using those if you want any more information or advice on this just you know you can get in touch with us and um, i'm just trying to make sure that everybody's safe and doing the right thing so um, so what i'm actually going to do is answer any questions now what i would like to say is and i've been in in this in this position where i've done webinars and i've thought i want to ask this question but i think it's a stupid question and think oh should i shouldn't i but like i say just fire them at us um what i what i'm just going to quickly show you these these are ivd tubes and i've got a little youtube video on this as you guys know but please like i say don't be using those you should be using medical device um, tubes, whether you're doing PRP, IPRF. So um, yeah, just make sure. And be careful with the tubes that say um, plain tubes, no anticoagulant. Sometimes they are plain, there's no anticoagulant. Yeah. But sometimes, even though if they're foreign tubes, they might not say IVD, but sometimes they have um, a clot activator in them. And what it is, the tubes are lined because the labs want them to clot quickly yeah. so it might say plain no additive but just just be forewarned so that the tube it all boils down to your treatment is only going to be as good as the sample or the harvest that you've got it's not just a question of getting something back in it's the quality of what you're putting back in and what you're using so you need to start with a good quality tube because and that's your starting point yeah basics really mm. so um mm. okay guys i've got some questions coming through so let me just get this chat up sorry i'll have to put my glasses on. <laughs> it's an age thing no, no, no. <laughs> right okay let's start at the top um so i don't want to miss anybody so let me just um i'm done let me i'm very interested in this treatment i am qualified to level four is this sufficient it is indeed so because it's autologous it's literally iprf in particular zero risk even PRP to a degree, you know, if you, worst case scenario, let's say you inject this and you inject it into a vessel, to your own, your body will literally just break it down straight away. So it's it's so safe to do, but yes, level four, you're absolutely welcome. We, on the training, we cover microneedling and meso injection, we cover face, body and hair. Um, so like I say, training is very thorough, but you're more than welcome, level four. Minimum NVQ, level three or equivalent to do the training. And um, on the training, of course, we explain a little bit of the science as to what happens to um, any platelets or unused fibrin or anything. It's, yeah. we, we explain this little bit of science behind yes. it. Yes. Your brain will explode following training. Yeah. Uh, do I need to be CQC registered to have IPRF in my clinic? No. Um, like I say, it is classed as autologous, but it's different to things like 
stem cell um, treatment and fat transfer, like, or to, you know, obviously uh, where you're actually re-injecting those kinds. So first of all, stem cell is completely different. Please don't market this as a stem cell treatment. You need a license to do that. We're not, we're not harvesting stem cells. And fat transfer, again, is a whole different ball game. So to answer your question, the long way around, you know, we don't need to be CQC. Um, you, will, you will see sometimes um, advertised platelet harvesting and stem cell harvesting. Um, the number of stem cells that are circulating in your system are minimal. Stem cells are what you find in your regenerative areas, in your bone marrow, which in, in adults, don't mean to teach just so cakes, but wet in adults really, are your sternum here, your yeah, crest here in babies all your bones have bone marrow in them but as you grow old it's, it's just it's just here stem cells do not circulate naturally you will not be able to harvest enough stem cells to make any difference and stem cells harvesting is done in a clinical environment it's a it is a procedure, surgical, a surgical yeah. procedure yeah we're, ju yeah. we're just obviously i know we digressed a little bit but i've seen quite a few uh, clinics and training providers market this as, as stem cells so and we're just trying to obviously set the set, set the record straight I put my teeth in this morning um does your course include phlebotomy um yes so we've got two options so on the on the normal course if you like the iprf face and hair we will teach you how to take blood so i'm i'm a fully qualified phlebotomist and i will teach you how to do it the safe and the correct way if you want a certificate in phlebotomy you can come on the phlebotomy course because obviously on the IPRF, I will teach you how to do it. You walk away confident, um, but we won't certify you. Now, if the insurance then require you to have a certificate in phlebotomy, we also run a half day phlebotomy course in addition. So you've got two options, but more than happy we can teach you on the day. And that's how most people actually do it, to be fair. Um, what spin speed do you use for IPRF and how long for? So we're not giving out protocols on today's webinar. Obviously, you'll appreciate that we run a, a very comprehensive training and the protocols that we actually use are exclusive to us. Now, what we've done is there's been IPRF. Now, it was first launched, I think, around 2012 um, in France. Um, but we found that we need to do a little bit more research. So our protocols are exclusive to us. So we do require you to come on training and we obviously elaborate on everything that we've said and you get a complimentary online skin science blood pathology growth factor included which is done as pre-study but um, like I say you would need to come on our training to use our protocols um, yes we can send recording no problem um, already qualified in PRP guys if you're already qualified in PRP and you want to upgrade to IPRF please get in touch with the office. What we can do is, the training is normally 795 for your VAT, but we're more than happy to do you a discounted price to come on the practical training and be certified in IPRF. That's not a problem. So like I say, just email info at cosmopro.co.uk. Uh, all the training dates are listed on the website as per usual under the training pages, and you can just have a look which date suits you and then come on one of the courses. Um, next year, like I say, Claudia, all the dates are listed. You can just go on the website. Get in, if you are PRP trained already, get into the office first. We'll give you a discount code. But if this is brand new to you, you can just go straight onto cosmopro.co.uk, go to the training page, IPRF, book your date online, and then we'll register you for the pre study and obviously then come on to the practical training. Um, so, like I say, the, the full course is 795. Um, that includes your online study, but if you're PRP trained, get in touch with the office and they can they can discuss everything with you. Um, if you need a certificate for bottomy for insurance, we insurance com uh, companies still insure you to carry IPRF. What we found is most insurance companies will still insure you for IPRF without a separate phlebotomy certification. Um, but like I say, some people are really nervous taking blood and they just prefer that peace of mind that they want to come and do a, a course on that as well. So we've offered both and it's more for, even though the insurance companies are happy just to take your IPRF certificate and that's enough to do the treatment. Um, we've just found that some people kind of get really, really nervous about taking blood. And, and, it's, and I think it's just sometimes if they've been taught incorrectly to start with as well. So um, like I say, we've got, uh, which we bring on the IPRF training days, a practice arm, 
I've got little pads and we would never make you go, you know, you know just go and do, um, do it on a, on a model, if you like, without you feeling confident first. So, you know, we talk you through everything. I don't, I don't push anybody into doing anything they're not comfortable with. So I've just got more questions here. We don't do online training for IPRF. What we found was we initially did launch that, but people were still coming back with loads of questions and not sure. So we just basically ask you to come on practical training and it's to make sure that you're hundred percent confident doing the treatment. There is, as you can see, we've touched on it today. There's a lot of science behind this. And what we found is even people that are already PRP trained, and I don't mean to be disrespectful when I say this, that they've not been taught very well. And I think this, this, this is not their fault. This is the training providers that they don't really understand what they're teaching. So we just, we want you to come on our training. So you are hundred percent confident and competent in what you're doing. Um, is the platelet concentration in the total plasma fraction following centrifugation or is it the platelet concentration in the platelet rich area of the plasma fraction? The, the slide was the, um, the concentration in the baseline, which was a full blood count, which was whole blood. The second two numbers were the concentrations in the harvest. And I do hear a lot of the time about the platelet rich, so you're saying platelet rich area of the plasma fraction. If you're um, harvesting from um, platelet centri from centrifuged blood, I would think that most people, I know what we do, we take off all the harvest. As you take off all the harvest, you're going to have the same concentration of platelets throughout the harvest. If you're harvesting in sections, then you are going to get a slight concentration grading concentration the concentrations that we gave out were for the harvested plasma so it was a, a uniform concentration of platelets throughout so original number was whole blood which is how they measure your platelets in a laboratory whole blood the second two numbers were the uniform concentration of platelets in the harvest hope that answers your question if not ask me ask come back again and say no that didn't answer your question that's for you jane so yeah. in a nutshell concentrated it's the concentrated yeah. platelets <laughs> yeah so the first number was whole blood which is a number you get from the laboratory the second numbers the I, the prp and the iprf were the platelet concentrates yes eve if i need to harvest two tubes do i spin them at the same time I come, I'm concerned that it will start to conceal. So I would spin them at the same time. You've got about 45 minutes before your, your sample, your, your plasma, if you like, will start to turn into a gel. Now, I found even with some clients, you even have longer, way over an hour. And then having said that, it's, it's best to use, this is PRP and IPRF guys, you need to really use your sample within 60 minutes. Now, with PRP, because you've got an anticoagulant in there, you, you obviously, you, you could put your sample on the, on the side and it will, it will just stay like it is because you've got an anticoagulant, it won't clot. However, we're thinking about platelets here. And once you've taken platelets out of the body, they don't really like that. So obviously they will start to degrade and it's optimum to use your sample, whether it's PRP or IPRF, within 60 minutes. This is to preserve the efficacy of your platelets. With IPRF, because there's no anticoagulant, obviously eventually your sample will start to clot, but you have about 45 minutes. So to answer your question in a long-winded way, is take your, take your two tubes, draw your blood, spin them together, harvest what you need, use it, and then you can go back and harvest the other tube. Absolutely fine. I, I would just add there, um, the, there might be a little bit of, um, misunderstanding about centrifugation so it's not the centrifugation yes if the IPRF tube if you take it keep it on the side and don't spin it it will still clot whether you spun it or not it will eventually after about 45 50 minutes it will still clot so spinning it not spinning it doesn't slow that clotting down it's the, it's the fact that you've taken blood out of and there's no anticoagulant. Um, 
So an anti as Liz says, an anticoagulant, you can stick it on the side in a tube and three days later, it will still be liquid. It won't be any good, but it will still be liquid. But the IPRF tube, if you leave it on the side, whether it's spun or unspun, it will still eventually, after about 45, 50 minutes, it will still clot. Okay. Right, more questions. I'm just working my way. When we're doing platelet function, I'm sorry, I'm talking while this is looking at numbers. When we're doing platelet function in the laboratory, we have an anticoagulant in it. But what we then have to do to make the platelets work, we then have to put an activator in. So, but we do test them within the hour because mm. after that they do start to deteriorate because they're such complicated little cells. They they do they they don't obviously once you take them out as Liz says they do start to deteriorate. But you've you've got up to about an hour before they start yeah. to deteriorate. Um, can you use the same centrifuge for IPRF as PRP? So the answer is yes. It will depend on the settings on your centrifuge. So if you do want to do IPRF and you've already got a centrifuge, feel free to send us a, a photo. Well, not necessarily a photo, but I need the settings of your centrifuge and I can tell you then if that's going to be suitable for IPRF. But you don't need a, a different special centrifuge for IPRF. It's all to do with the settings. Um, what centrifuge is best? Now, obviously, I'm going to be biased and say ours is amazing, but there's just a few things that you need to be uh, mindful of. It needs to be digital. It has to be. Please don't use these with little dialing knobs on that you don't even know what the settings are. Um, it does need to have a brushless motor. It needs to have a, a sensor in there to make sure that it detects any imbalance as well. Uh, obviously, make sure you know as a CE FDA approved, but. Um, we have different settings on ours, but they're just the basics. Please, please, please don't, you know, the, the, the 50 quid ones off eBay that look like a little cup pot that literally do vibrate. No good, honestly. You do get what you pay for with some centrifuges. So um, if you want any more information on that, you can download our brochure off the website if you do want to, but there's just a few things that you do need to be mindful of with centrifuges. Like I say, it's a very simple process, but at the end of the day, if your centrifuge is rattling around, you, you play that sound and they'll be um, and the very is, happy. If you get one that's a little bit better quality, it will stand you in good stead. You know, you're probably going to be offering this treatment for a long time. Yeah. You don't want to be renewing your centrifuge every year. So if you get a little cheap one that's that bounces about, A, you're going to destroy your platelet. Platelets don't like being rattled about. <laughs> they really don't. So um I know you think, well, I'm centrifuging it, but, but, but you're, it's a controlled way of, of get, separating them. All we're doing with centrifugation, with IPRF, is we're getting rid of the red cells. That's what we're doing. Yeah. If you stick a, a tube on the side and leave it long enough, the red cells will separate out, but, but you'll lose everything as well. So we're just quickly getting rid of the set red cells, but you want to do it in a controlled manner, and you don't want to bash your platelets about. No. We, like you say, respect them. Yeah. Um, yes, there are centrifuges. Our centrifuge does both. So you can do PRP and IPRF with ours. Um, and you need the centrifuge. So if you want to do plasma fillers as well, you need the centrifuge. So um, let me have a look. How many sessions required for IPRF treatment to get results? What is the average profit margin for the treatment? So good question. Um, the, the, the answer basically is I have seen, we've, we've got a members hub and we actually share before and after filters on there, which you can use to market as well. We've actually had amazing results from one treatment. We did share an image. Um, one of our practitioners did a hair treatment, one treatment, and she got a result. And obviously she's gonna carry on doing that. But so like I say, you can actually see results from one treatment with IPRF and we've got the photos to prove. We, you know, we do encourage our practitioners to share those with us. Um, digital machine, how do I know if it's brushless? You should probably should have a, when you bought it, the company should have sent you, or you can probably dig the brochure out, it will tell you, it should have a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a specification. Thank you, sheet. yeah, specification, yeah. so you can just double check. It basically, what you want is when it's spinning, when it slows down, you want the machine to slow it down slowly, so it's like got brakes, uh, sorry, it's got gears, not a break. What you don't want is to have a break and then all of a sudden as your, as your centrifuge stops spinning, bam, your, your platelets basically will bash against the side of the tube. Whereas a, a good centrifuge slows it down gradually. So We have centrifuges at work that do have breaks on them, but we can use that because what we've done with our samples is we've done a hard spin. 
And when you do a hard spin, it packs the red cells. And they're packed so tightly that even if you put a brake on, it won't disturb them. That, that's not like RPF. On the, on the, the reason that we say come on the course to show about spinning is because we explain about difference between hard spin and slower spin. And there's a lot of um, explanation to go in there about the, the logistics of the sample, if you like. So how it behaves under different spin speeds. Um, how much is our centrifuge? Our centrifuge is £750. Um, if you do want to come on training, we do packages as well. Um, let me have a quick look if I've missed anybody's questions. Is horizontal better? No, not for this. Um, now, if you are in dentistry, and if there's any dentists out there, forgive me, I'm not an expert in dentistry, but um, if you're doing PRF, not the injectable form, and I think actually just picking up on that, there are some companies out there that market PRF, that's, that's a clot. That is a gel form, and they use that to basically regenerate the tissue. So if somebody's had uh, their teeth out, or they, you know, they're having implants, if you like, they pack the wounds with the PRF, they chop it up, and they pack it. And that's where a horizontal centrifuge may be more beneficial. There's studies out there, I think at the moment, there are some fors and against, but what happens is with, I'm digressing again, but with PRF is they spin it horizontal like this. So they make sure when the clot forms, the growth factors are evenly distributed through the clot. So then when they chop it up, you've got an even number of growth factors through the clot. With um, anything else, obviously, especially with IPRF is, if you spin it like this, as it and then obviously goes back to your vertical to take the sample out, your cells will not have separated correctly. So with, with IPRF, no, you want basically a vertical centrifuge. You, you find that you'll get all the red cells literally laid up the side of the tube because, because of the uh, spin conditions that we do with the horizontal one. You, you don't get a nice... Um, harvest segregation of the red cells they tend to lay flat and they because it's because they're not packed if you remember i said a few hours a few minutes ago about the, the spin about hard spin they pack them because these aren't packed they tend to lay against the side of the tube so as it comes back up again you, you just don't get um the red cells separating out enough i hope, hope that answers i'm just checking i think I think I've answered everybody's questions. I'm just checking. So um, if I haven't, and if you think of anything, then like I say, please feel free to get in touch with those. I hope you found today's, I'm just going to close these uh, chat boxes down. So that's it. Um, I hope you found it interesting and informative and helpful. And like I say, I, uh, you know, it, we, we just want to make sure that everybody's doing things right and getting the best treatment. And like I say, I'm not bad mouthing PRP in that way, but things move on. PRP has been around for a long time and now IPRF is taking over and I'm hoping today's webinar has explained why and why it's a superior treatment and why you basically are going to get better results. And like I say, everything's backed up with, uh, with the data to prove um, everything that I've covered. So I'm just making sure I've not missed anybody's uh, questions. So um, yep, info at cosmopro.co.uk if you do uh, want to inquire and you're already PRP trained and you want to upgrade and there's loads of information on our website as well. So uh, thank you for joining. Uh, we do appreciate your time and um, like I say, you know where we are if you need us. So more webinars next Friday and um, yeah, just stay, just stay in touch while we're in the lockdown. So take care everybody and have a lovely, lovely weekend. And stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> new, new <strap> <laughs> right, bye guys. Bye.